Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Tuxbury Zoning Board of Appeals. Today is June 30th, 2022. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is approval of our meeting minutes from April 28th, 2022 and May 26th, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. First on the agenda is Tara Misrata and Michael Buttis for a variance under section 5.3.3A of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaw for our side yard setbacks on a special permit under section 8.11B to construct a 20 by 19 by nine two-story addition as shown on plans filed with the board. Said property, property is located at 27 Old Boston Road, Assessor's Map 48, Lot 32, Zoned Residential. And who are, who are the voting members on this one? And the voting members are um, Rob, Mike, and Joe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Name and addresses, please. Um, Tara Mistretta, 27 Old Boston Road. Marcel Ferreira, MF Engineering, 109. Um, Highland Avenue, Needham. Great. Okay, can you talk about what you're planning to do here? All right, so our client is uh, proposing uh, a new addition at the back of the house. And because of the uh, shape of the property, we got uh, too close to the property line at the uh, one of the sides. But if we look at the uh, tax map, uh, the abutting property there, it's a complex, condominium complex, and you have uh, a street between the property line and this property, um, which is, it, it's far from what we are proposing here for the, for the new addition. Right, I'm just reading what the um, building commissioner wrote. So you would only be about three feet from the setbacks as opposed to the 15? Yes, we are three feet Difference. from the property line. For the addition. For the addition, correct. Mm -hmm. What's to the right of it from the where the three feet is the difference? Uh, can I approach? Yes, please. This is the property. Your property is right here. Is right. that in our folder here? Yes. Yeah, yes. We have that. Okay. And so this is the, the complex at, the, at that side of the property. But if you look at, uh, I, I should have uh, printed a, a copy. If you, if you look at the Google Maps, so you have plenty of room there. You have uh, this wooded area. You have a street, and then you have the other buildings on the other side of the road. Thank you. 
So he showed me the same thing that you currently have. Show right. me that piece right there. That's correct. Could I ask a question? Sure. What happened to the railroad that's not intact anymore here? The railroad bed looks like it traveled right by there. I didn't do the. Oh, sorry. The train I, tracks are just cut off in the back there. Okay. And that's your back, would be your side yard or your backyard? Um, so currently, right now, it's uh, just a wooded area on the side of our yard. Okay. We don't go back there or anything. Does the is that where the addition's going to? To that point, it's going to the to the right. It's before that. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. No, okay. not, not right now. Is this is this a residence? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why are you non-conforming to begin with before you even came in? Well, the shape, of, the shape of the lot, it's yep. really narrow. And what she's trying to accomplish on the addition, it's, it's, we only have that section of the house that we can add what she's asking for. Let me ask my question again. Mm -hmm. You're asking for a special permit under 8.1.1B, mm -hmm. which is existing non-conforming. That's what we are requesting. I, I didn't um, fill up the application for that. You're asking for a variance for your side yard setback, because you're three feet away. Correct. And then you're also asking for a special permit under section 8.1.1.B. 8.1.1B is non-conforming uses. The ZBA may issue a special permit to extend a non-conforming use only if it determines that the change or extension shall not be more substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use. What's the addition going to be used for? It's residence. Yeah. Bedroom? Yeah. It's yes. just, uh, right now, currently we're trying to expand our family and one of the bedrooms is downstairs. So I just want us all up top. Mm -hmm. um, to have all our bedrooms upstairs, so we would put another bedroom upstairs and then just an open room at the bottom. Who filled out your application? That's very specific. I I, I don't think I, I requested that. You it's know? on your application. No, you did. We take a look. Why? Did the building inspector cite it? Yes, that's what he wrote. Okay. The building inspector wrote it on the, on the reason, but it makes no sense why. Okay, according to the. Uh... Why don't you sit back down so we can have you on the microphone, please? According to the uh, contractor that's going to be doing the uh, remodeling, the new addition, uh, the stairs inside the, the house are not conforming, and we're going to move the stairs and bring up to the code. No. That's not it, though. No. This is, it's a use thing. It's a use thing. Like, if, if, if you were running a business out of it, um, and you're adding to the business, Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, this information here, it, it wasn't my writing. I, I didn't feel this form. So that's what your interpretation was for this? The code. Well, it's, it's a use. It's, it's a use. It's not, it's not a, a you're already too close or anything like that. It specifically calls out non-conforming use. I think that by reading the... The, the zoning code. He probably uh, misinterpreted that. Uh, so what he was trying to achieve is that the uh, stairs inside the house are not conforming right now. So we're going to move the stairs and bring into the, the code. You, 
I have no problem with scratching off the special permit. I'm sure the board doesn't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But if there's a reason for it to be there, you're going to be back in front of us. No, there's no reason for that. I, that's very specific. Because uh, that's what you were denied for as well. That's what is on your denial letter. Uh -huh. From the building commissioner. Yeah. And you submitted this, right? You submitted this. Yeah, so I think uh, when you got the code... You need to just face forward and just we'll figure this out together. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I see that the reason was written by the, the building inspectors. So. I think we can cross that. That's not part of uh, what we are asking. It's just for the setback. And uh, according to him... Well, he wrote it in his letter. So I would really, because if, if we scratch it, you'll be back again. So really, let's think about before we scratch anything off the table. All right. Let's look at this. I don't want you to have to do this twice. So, just so I'm understanding correctly, that is, that denial is based off of? Two codes. There are two, two yeah. different. One is for a special permit and one is for setbacks. So we're trying to figure out what the special permit is for. We get the setbacks, that makes complete sense. You don't have the room, the okay. yardage, that's fine. But it's that special permit piece, we can't figure out what. And that would be normally used for business? I don't have the letter in front of me. I have it somewhere, I just can't find it. Oh, thank you. Just The reasoning. They use very oh. paper. Pa was page two because that's where he wrote it. Right here. Special office, something or other. Mm. And mm. Not having the right size. Master bedroom, the second floor. It's an odd shape, which. Problematic to the property establishment. Yeah, this, this was before. this was written by the applicant. Oh, that was them. This is their reason. Oh, to the zoning board, yeah. It's to us, that's yeah. not what this, no. this is. What he wrote. Oh, mm -hmm. So you guys were asking for that. Yeah. Didn't mention anything about the office. <clears throat> it says here in the letter that's addressed to the zoning board, uh, proposed addition to include an office on the first floor. What type of office would that be? Just home office? Just home office. Yeah, yeah not commercial. No. No, 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 just home office. Oh, probably that's why. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you had proposed to the building inspector that you were going to put an office in that building, in your home? It's, it's not. <laughs> so if you said that, then he probably thought that it was for a business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. It's, it's a home office. Yeah. I, since the pandemic, I now work from home. Who doesn't? <laughs> Actually, I don't anymore. I love it. I've been on the longest maternity leave of my life, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any pictures of what you want to build? Do you have the pictures of what you're doing? To the, yes, I do. To the house? To the approach again? Yes, please. Yeah, I, we have this. Oh, thank you for giving me that. That, I don't have. Can we keep these? Yes, sure. Did you show something different to the building commissioner? That's what you included, right? Well, because on your denial letter, it also says the proposed deck would only be approximately 3.3 .3 feet away. Does this addition have a deck on it? No, there's no deck on it. No deck. No deck. I have a deck right now. Are you moving the deck at all or no. changing anything to the deck? No. No. No, no decks.
It's just basically an office on the first floor, a master bedroom on the second floor. Correct. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why we have a special permit list. Yeah. What's that? I couldn't answer that. Do you guys have any more questions? No, I don't know. The only question I have is, do we want to scratch the special permit, or do you want to do um, continue and have the applicant find out why there's a special permit listed on their application? I'm not comfortable with, with renting a special permit. I'm not either, because I I would say I would I would prefer you go back to the building. Personally, we can vote on this after, but I would want to go back to the building inspector and did you you get this letter? You got this letter from him, right? The denial letter? Yeah, you got it. Did it make sense to you? Because I'm sitting here reading it. It doesn't make sense to me. So I would uh, personally would want to question what it means and what he's denying and what he's requesting. You understand where we're at, right? You're asking for a special permit for a use, okay. and you're telling us you don't need it, yeah. and we'd hate to just cross it off, and then you'd be back next month paying all the money and recertifying letters and all that to come back again for a special permit. Or we continue, and you contact the building commissioner and ask him why he wants you to get a special permit. Yeah, let's continue. Okay. We'll have to put this off a month in, in or whenever. A month. Yeah, we'll be back in a month. We'd have to vote on that. Yeah, we'll, we need to vote on that. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Is there anything else you'd like to say right now? No. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to continue. Tara Mastrada and Michael Butis for a variance under Section 40. <laughs> no. the old book. Don't do it. For a variance under Section 5.3.1A of the Tuxbury Zoning Bylaw. For side yard setbacks and a special permit under section 8.1.1B to construct a 20 by 19 9 two foot excuse me two story addition as shown on plans filed with this board said property is located at 27 Old Boston Road assesses map 48 lot 32 zone residential uh, continue that to our next month's scheduled hearing which is July 28th at 6.30. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See, See you next month. See Thank you. Month. Appreciate it. Um, Do you want to take this with you? Sure. Go to the building commissioner and find out why he wanted a special permit. I would ask okay. about that and this mm -hmm. that I underlined. Okay. All right, good luck. See you in a month. Next is Frederick <coughs> for variance under section 5.3.1E3 on of the Tuxbury zoning bylaw for side yard setback to construct a 10 by 20 carport to the attached garage as shown. On plans file boards that property is located at 1501 Wilpa Road Assessors Map 56 Lot 196 Zoned Residential. Name and address, please. And, and who uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And the voting members is myself, Nancy, Rob, and Mike. Name and address, please. Frederick McKinnon, 1501 Whipple Road. Can you talk about what you're trying to do, please? 
well, I want to build a carpool, have it attached off the side of my garage. I park my car there quite often, and I figured I'd build a carpool, I'd keep it out of the elements. You already have a garage there, huh? I have a garage there, yes. You already have a fence there? Yes. yes. So it'll be about a foot from the fence, it looks like. It would be inside the fence, obviously. Yeah, inside the fence, right. You have to excuse my drawings. <laughs> Straighter than I will draw, ever. Feet long, six and a half feet tall, sitting on four by fours. Excuse me. Twenty feet long. Yes. Six and a half feet tall. Approximately. Yes. Sitting on four by fours. Four by fours. Roof, no walls. Uh, no walls, roof. Roof. Two by sixes. Footings, not a foundation. Yeah. Sauna tube footing. Yeah. Uh, do they have to be four feet down? Uh, that's not up to us. That's up to the building commissioner. Okay. What we're here for. I assumed it was four feet. What we're here for is your. The variance. Your variance. Right. And you're actually. You need all of that variance. Because what you're looking for is a detached accessory structure shall not be. shall be located on the same lot. And you got that. Mm -hmm. Behind the front of the building line. Mm -hmm. You're kind of right on the edge with that one. Yes. That's right there. Um, shall not be located nearer than 10 feet from the principal building. You are. And shall be located at least 10 feet from any side or rear lot. Right, it's closer than 10 feet from the side. Uh, you're one foot two from the side. Oh, after it's built, yes. Right. Well, your garage, your garage was okay. That's why you didn't need a variance. I didn't need a variance for that. No. You did not need a variance for that one. No, it's already 10 feet. I built that like 40 years ago. I have, um, I have no questions. Do you have any no. Do you have anything else you want to add? No. no. Right. Being an open hearing, is there anybody who wants to speak on this? No. Nope. I'd like to 
make the motion? You can't. I'd like to make a motion to close both parts of the hearing. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to, any discussion? No. I'd like to make a motion to approve Frederick McKinnon for a variance under section 5.3.1E3 of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaw for a side yard setback to construct a 10 by 20. That's right, 10 by 20. 10 by 20 carport to the attached garage as shown on plans filed with this board. Said property is located at 1501 Whipple Road, assesses map 56, lot 196, zoned residential. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Is, is my next process to go get the uh, downstairs and get the uh, permit? Is that what I go through next? You get the you get notified, or do they? I don't know what they do. How they go through that? There's an appeal process that you have to wait for. Yeah. Okay. And then you go get your permit. So I don't know. go go see downstairs. Go see them downstairs. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell you. Okay, they open tomorrow. Yeah, they should. Be. What till noon time or something? Should be open all day. It's not a holiday. Huh. I'm working. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate sure. it. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, Maureen Hawkins for a variance under section 5.3.1 E3 of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaw for a yard rear yard setback for a previously installed above ground pool as, uh, as shown on plans filed with this board said property is located at 107 Tyler Road Assessors Map 18 Lot 54 Zoned Residential and voting on this one is Joe, Mike and Rob. Name and address for the board, please. Um, Maureen Hawkins, 107 Tyler Road. Right, can you just tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do here? Um, so I had a pool installed last year, and um, I had indicated to the installer that I need to make sure that he was 10 feet away from the property line of fence that I have. And during a, um, I had an inspection after the electrical was done for the pool for the grounding, and it was signed off, so I assumed everything was good. It looked like it was 10 feet. And I, uh, this year I was adding a deck to the pool, and the building inspector, when he went out to go check the footings, he brought it to my attention that the pool was not 10 feet from the property line. And that's indicated here, it's eight foot seven inches, is that what it is? Correct. Did you have a building, building permit to put in the pool last year? I did. Was it signed off? I, yeah, I'm, well, it is. I have it, I caught it here, and um, I assumed it was good to go. I got a signature on it and... Building permit or the electrical permit? Both. Don't they just sign this? My electrician said he came by and signed it. And it was this before there was nothing there, and then that was there. Yeah, you got your yeah. final building, your electrical. Thank you. Yeah. So, Rob, they get both sign offs building and electrical? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're not here for the deck. You're here because the pool's three Correct. feet thin. Yep. All right. All right. Yep.
Any see that? They went in for a permit to do a deck. Uh, uh, they called out on a pool. All right. I, I, do you guys have any questions? No. All right. Being it's a open hearing, is there anybody that wants to speak or have anything they want to say? No. Motion. Move to close both past the hearing. Okay. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Okay, great. Uh, nope. Great, thank you. Just, you just close the hearing. All right. Sorry. Very closed. Very closed. Very closed. Very closed. Very closed. Have, have we, have we can make another motion. Yes. So, approve? Yep. Can you make a motion to approve? Yeah. Make a motion to approve. Uh, We're making, we haven't made the or, motion yet. Oh, sorry. For a variance on. Oh, sorry. God, no, don't be sorry. It's on, on us. For a variance on the section 5.3.1 E3 for the Tuxbury zoning bylaw for a uh, rear yard setback for a previously installed above ground pool as shown on plans filed with the board. The uh, said property is located at 107 Tyler Road, assesses map 18, lot 54, zoned residential. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll second that motion. I'm on a roll today, everybody. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Rob. All set now. Thank you. I'm sorry. Better than what I do. I'm on a roll today. I'm just like rushing it through. Right. Next on the agenda is Daniel. Daily on behalf of El Elrig USA Acquisitions for a special permit under Section 3130, Appendix A, Table of Uses, Section C, Commercial Uses 14 of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaw to construct in, and operate a, a drive-through car wash on the property as shown on plans with this board. Said property is located at 1879 Main Street. Assessor's map 87, lot 18, zoned commercial. Good evening. Name Good evening. Address for the board, please. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing I need to say is that the three voting members is myself, Mike, and Rob. Sorry. Thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Dan Bailey. I am a land use attorney with the firm of Pierce Atwood in Boston. Uh, with me tonight is the project en engineer, Jake Modestow from Stone Stonefield Engineering. Uh, we represent All Rig USA Acquisitions, uh, which is a Michigan-based real estate developer. Uh, they have the property at 1879 Main Street under agreement, and we've proposed, submitted an application for a special permit for a car wash. Uh, there are three pieces to what we have to say to you tonight. Uh, the first is I'm gonna go over the zoning because it's a little, a little unusual. We've got a zoning freeze, and I'll explain that. Uh, I know you have information from the town planner on that too. Uh, Jake will then go over the project. He's got boards and other information on that. Uh, and then I'll just briefly touch on the criteria for a special permit. Uh, and of course, we're happy to answer any questions at any time. Uh, you know, you have a memo in the file from the town planner that explains that this application is submitted in part under the zoning bylaw in effect uh, prior to town meeting. You know, the town completely uh, revamped, re recodified its zoning bylaw at the May town meeting. Uh, we filed a, a Form P A and R plan 
prior to town meeting, which was endorsed by the planning board, uh, that provides this property with a three-year use freeze. So um, you, know, you can no longer obtain a special permit for a car wash in this district under the 2022 bylaw, but you can obtain one under the 2021 bylaw. So it's a use freeze only. We're subject to all of the dimensional and other requirements of the 2022 bylaw. Uh, so the property is located, well, it was lo located in the uh, highway business district or highway district uh, in the front and heavy industrial in the rear and in the highway district, uh, there's the availability of a special permit. So I'm gonna ask Jake to take over now and walk you through the project. Good evening, members of the board. Jake Rodesto, Stonefield, uh, 120 Washington Street, Salem, Massachusetts, for the record. Uh, I just have a couple of boards. Uh, we're looking in front of you, it's just a Google Maps rendering um, shown of the parcel, uh, shown here in yellow. Um, some of you may know this uh, as the vacant parcel at Main Street and Airport Roads on the south side. Um, of that intersection, the airport and Main Street um, intersection is signalized. Um, this, I think, was historically, we'll call it a sports complex. At, at best, um, it's been vacant for some time now. Uh, the property is about 2.3 acres in size altogether. And from an impervious coverage standpoint, as it sits today, there's about one and a half acres of impervious coverage. That includes basically what's left over um, from the previous user. Uh, I do want to bring a note that the, as it sits today, the southern part of the property, as you look at the page, is Heath Brook. There is a flood uh, plain that does extend into our property. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit, but all necessary improvements are being made to ensure that there's no detriment, uh, detrimental impact to the Heath Brook. If, if anything, I'd say there's going to be an improvement uh, to everything that's going there. Um, so we're bounded by Main Street, DOT right of way. Uh, currently out there today, there is, we'll call it two access points. One is an unconventional access point, kind of close to the northeast corner of the property uh, at that airport and uh, Main Street intersection. Uh, essentially, there's a pedestrian crossing that, that crosses a drive. It, it almost acts as a fifth access point um, to the right of way. Um, and then there's, we'll call it a shared drive that's almost splitting the Domino's property to the right of us uh, and then our parcel um, directly to the left. Uh, it's important to know that um, even though the special permit request in front of you tonight is for a car wash uh, with the freeze, uh, several properties over, approximately seven parcels uh, to our east, um, there is actually the zone that would permit that. So when we talk about consistency, but as far as the use, uh, it would be in line with what's, what the intent is within the corridor. Uh, and we've had, before this project even started, we've had extensive conversations um, with the town professionals, uh, town staff, DOT. Uh, we, we've done a, a lot of legwork uh, on our end to make sure this application is, we'll call it as tight as possible. So what the applicant is looking to do is to uh, raise everything on site. Uh, and actually vegetate quite a bit in the rear of the parcel and install a new automated car wash. It's an express car wash uh, facility. Um, express car wash essentially means you know, you're staying inside your vehicle at all times. Um, so I, I think it's always best to walk the board through what we're expecting to be a typical car wash uh, in our interaction. We are expecting most of our traffic to enter off of Main Street. Uh, it is a full movement driveway. My office did prepare a traffic study um, anticipating this full movement driveway and did have conversations with DOT as well regarding this access point. DOT is on board with the full movement driveway um, at this location and the traffic uh, study does support uh, having that full movement driveway. So we're expecting those customers to take a, a just for the board's reference, essentially 180 degrees. Uh, the top of the page is now south. Main Street is now at the bottom of the page. So you'll enter off of Main Street uh, via the drive. It's, again, it's, it's large in size. So there's access movements when you're taking a left out and a right out, uh, not to ensure that we have enough queuing. Uh, you'll enter, you'll take an immediate right um, into the property. Uh, you will pass into the car uh, queuing facility where, where our three pay stations are. Uh, it's kind of more running. As you look at the, it's the plan right, but it's the west uh, property line uh, that's bordering Airport Road, which is a private road uh, that we that there's no guaranteed access to a private road. Um, you will we will then enter into the 21 car queue. 
Uh, we are anticipating that to be plenty of queuing capacity with the, these modern express car washes. We actually have the ability to speed and slow down uh, the processing ability uh, of the facility itself. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Three pay lanes, outside pay lane will be for members, uh, members only, where this is a subscription-based uh, Icon Express um, uh, model. So we're hoping that we'll have plenty of members who will have quick, easy access to the outside lane and through. There's an overhead license plate reader uh, at the pay station, again, to continue to help process vehicles as fast as possible. Um, the building itself uh, will have a Kia, we'll call it a, a pay station, actually directly adjacent to, they call the inside lane, uh, adjacent to uh, the building, there's actually a manager's office there and a pay station, so all of our customer action, we're really anticipating just being here. So there's gonna be a manager with eyes on the, uh, the POS and you know there'll be a customer service there person as well. We're expecting between two and six employees on site at any given time. After uh, the customer selects one of the options um, as far as uh, the wash within the vehicle, uh, within the, uh, the building, they will then head towards the rear of the parcel and then enter, or well, they'll have the option in case you know, they decide not to get a car wash to exit out the emergency uh, egress lane, which essentially acts as a bypass, and then in to enter or enter into the tunnel. Again, this is an entirely enclosed automated express car wash. So basically the intent is when you drive in dry, you leave dry. So all the operations will happen inside the building. So seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, uh, express car wash. Um, rule of thumb, really, when we look at this from a timing perspective, it's about two and a half minutes uh, through here, and it's not one car at a time. There's, a, I think, for this facility, we can have, an, an, you know, just over, I think, five vehicles uh, at any given time going through the tunnel. So, it, we have the ability to rapidly, you know, ensure customers are coming through and out. And as I said, we have the ability to speed up uh, the conveyor belt. All the all the uh, chemicals that are being used are biodegradable, OSHA approved. Uh, everything, like I said, is going to be contained within the building. We've ensured, uh, we'll call it appropriate slopes in and out of the building to ensure uh, driver's um, ability to exit and then to ensure that everything is being collected inside. Uh, these will actually go through three reclaim tanks. They're 2,000 gallons in size. Essentially, what that allows us to do is to, to take some of the water that we're using. As some people may think of a car wash as a high demand user, we're only actually using a two inch water line. Uh, and reclaiming you know, some of that water that is being uh, processed through the car wash back into it. So if you're driving through it, you know, most of the water, some of the water you should say you're gonna see uh, coming uh, out um, you know, in the actual facility itself is gonna be reclaimed. Um, so it's an added benefit here. It's, it's not uh, necessarily uh, required, but it's what the applicant is doing to ensure um, it's, we'll call it, um, de minimis uh, impact to the existing available systems. Uh, after the facility, after you leave the facility, there'll be a heated concrete pad to ensure that there's no icing over any, you know, remnants. Um, and then you'll have the ability to either exit out of the full moon driveway. You'll come out, you'll take a right. Uh, again, the ability to cross over to the Domino's Pizza, plan left, uh, that would be to the east side of the property, or exit out onto Main Street. Um, or what we're expecting most customers to do after they've done uh, their, their car wash is to take a right into the vacuum area. There are 30 parking spaces on the site, kind of on the left side of the plan, adjacent to the car wash facility. Uh, 23 of them will be vacuum. We'll have six uh, employee parking spaces, so the employees have been accounted for. Uh, there's a turnaround area at the rear that's the striped area at the top of the page. There's two ADA parking spaces. One will actually have vacuum, uh, bo uh, vacuum boom successful for it, and one is just a regular ADA parking space. Each uh, vacuum space, it's oversized, approximately 12 feet in width, uh, with 18 feet in depth. So it's larger than your typical parking space, so this is not the minimum, so we wanna ensure that customers have the ability to open up their doors and access uh, their vehicles when they're cleaning them. Um, so each parking space on edge of each one, we'll call it the striping, there's an overhead boom. Uh, these overhead booms, approximately 11 feet in height, they'll have an LED light. Um, that'll illuminate the areas below, that'll be on in uh, hours of dusk um, until closing. Um, so depending on the year, you know, the lights will be on more or less, you know, at different times. Um, so each one of these uh, uh, spaces will have that ability at the end um, of that vacuum boom, which is overhead. There will be a trash receptacle, microfiber towels, uh, basically a bunch of amenities uh, for the, the customers. This is essentially meant to be an ancillary uh, to the use. Um, 
so as, as much as possible, we, we, we've kind of contained everything uh, within the footprint uh, of the commercial component um, of uh, this parcel. There are uh, vacuum producers located in the front um, of the property. Uh, they're actually enclosed just to ensure um, visual um, well, aesthetics are, are upkept with the facility uh, and also damper some of the sound uh, that does come from uh, those vacuum producers. There's a trash enclosure located um, also for easy access for the facility located uh, in the front yard, kind of more close to the Domino's facility. So it'll be, it'll be hidden between the, the two buildings uh, when it's all said and done. Um, trash pickup for us is about once a week, it's as needed. Uh, this will happen before, we'll call it peak hours um, of the facility. Um, that's really from an overall site plan perspective, that's what we're doing. Um, global standpoint, from a stormwater perspective, we are increasing the amount of pervy or green space on site. You can see in the rear, majority of that was essentially all impervious coverage. We're revegetating that. We're actually uh, mitigating for any compensation regarding that flood in that, that area as well. Uh, the, the Heathbrook does have a, it's called the Riverfront Development Setbacks. So we're actually revegetating the first 25 feet from that, ensuring that there's no spill um, from our stormwater into that facility. Um, as well as before stormwater leaves our site, it'll be at a reduced rate. Uh, it'll actually be cleaned through uh, a water quality measure uh, located uh, at the rear of the, the facility. Also at the rear of the facility, we have an area for snow storage. Again, this application has been very thought out to ensure that we have all the necessary items um, to put this request in front of you. Um, it's a modern car wash, so we do have lighting. There's eight, uh, eight LED uh, pull lights mounted around the facility. Um, 25 boom lighted LED lights that we talked about before. Again, those will be only on from dusk till we'll call it closing or an hour after closing. Um, so limited uh, exposure at night. So we'll call it nine o'clock, you probably won't be seeing these lights on. Um, as far as landscaping, this is again a visual reference of what's being proposed. You can see as much as we can, we've concentrated all the landscaping for the proposed development around the facility to ensure that we're, we're properly uh, landscaping the facility with 10 trees located around the parcel. Uh, all of the 166 shrubs, um, which are vibranium, inkberries, bayberries, are scattered around the perimeter. So essentially what that does, is it allows us to screen um, some of the headlights that may be uh, associated with this kind of use. So we're, as much as we can, we're ensuring that there's no detriment to any adjoining properties, whatever that potential use, if someone decides to redevelop uh, down the line. Um, that is generally the, the application from a site plan top-down perspective some of the zoning components? Sure, and, and I'll also mention that um, we've applied uh, as required for site plan review with the planning board. Uh, we've got a hearing coming up in a two, three weeks on that uh, because site plan review is required. Uh, the zoning bylaw, and this was set out in the memo from Alex Lauder on June 8th, but section 3.5.3 of the zoning bylaw specifies the criteria that the board is to consider when considering this proposal. And the first is that social, economic, or community needs that are served by the proposal. Uh, I'll just read through these and then, you know, sort of speak generally to them. Uh, the next one is traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. The next is adequacy of utilities and other public services. The next is neighborhood character and social structures. The next one is consistency with the purposes of the district. The next is impacts on the natural environment. And the final one is the potential f fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. Uh, we feel that the project as designed meets these criteria, uh, that it is taking a piece of property that has not been in any sort of active use for quite some time, returning it to active use, returning it to the tax rolls. As Jake mentioned, uh, the environmental benefits of redeveloping the site and bringing it up to current stormwater standards and substantial reduction in the amount of impervious surface, particularly close to the stream, uh, are benefits. We're going to be treating the stormwater, uh, the existing, you know, their existing utilities. Uh, it's on a main street. Um, the uh, the capacity is there for to handle the, the traffic and the parking. Uh, a car wash actually is not uh, a, a real big generator of traffic, uh, certainly not like a, a drive-through, uh, but, um, you know, you know I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we all kind of know what a car wash is. 
you know, after work and, and Saturdays and Sundays, it'll get busy. Um, but it's also consistent with the other types of uses in that area, which are, you know, uses that are the type that when you're out doing your Saturday errands, you're likely to go there. Uh, restaurants, you know, uh, service, service uses. Um, uh, you know, I've already mentioned the natural environment and consistency with neighborhood character. Um, and you know, a benefit to the tax base and employment. And uh, with that, we're done and happy to answer any questions. Your access on Airport Road, is that something that's in the works? I know you said it's a private, private way. Yes, yeah, so I guess I'll touch on this. Sure. So it's, it's a private way. The intent right now is to request, and we're in the process of requesting uh, access to Airport Road. That is part of some of the waiver requests you have in front of you tonight. Mm -hmm. um, has to do with that. Um, we have talked with DOT regarding this. Traffic study uh, was actually done to support this. We did one without it, also supports it. But I think everyone would like to see um, access to that, that, um, that intersection. So we have direct you know, uh, access from a, a signalized intersection. We reduce conflict, so it's not solidified. We're trying; it's part of the request. So if it does, if it does, you know, go away, um, you know, we're we're ready to to continue to proceed with or without it. DOT was was good with the traffic study. Uh, yeah, I know when you come down Main Street and you pass McDonald's, there people that are trying to go into say Domino's, which is right next to you, mm -hmm. that gets bottlenecked right there, and then it widens out. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we do, do, we're still in that process of working with DOT as far as this, but you know I think there were some small striping changes that we'd make to improve the intersection. There, because we're changing, it may, may not seem very large, the actual intersection there, there are going to be, have to be some signal improvements that are made, primarily for the pedestrians. Um, so we're going to be doing some associated striping as well, which will help hopefully you know fix that problem. So you are going to do some work to the intersection? Yeah, yes. It's anticipated. It hasn't been formalized yet. You know, nothing on the record, but... That was that's what we are anticipating. But you have to do a site review anyways yes. with yeah. the planning board. Yeah, and, and just to a point of clarification, um, you know, those waivers are uh, taken up by the planning board in connection with site plan review. Yeah. I just worry about on a the first hot Saturday afternoon. All your vacuum bays are filled up with people washing their cars and get busy there. people are getting in there. Right across the street is the country club, which will now be the brewery. And then you're going to have that traffic from Livingston on. Mm -hmm. It's hot and it's filled. I think we'll be happy. We, we do expect most of our customers actually come after snow events, rain events. So that's that's when this thing will fill up. You're right in the neighborhood for all the events in town, too. Yes. Uh, Livingston Street. <laughs> Um, no questions? No? No. Uh, do you have any questions? I, I would like to ask them. So are you guys trying to get access right now from Airport Road? Yeah. 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 Uh, the, it's an unusual title. I'll, uh, that's the way I'll put it. So I mean, in... in to access that property now, you would do what you guys are proposing now without Airport Road, correct? Yes. All right. Yeah. But it, 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 if we can come out at the signalized intersection, then is a is a better mm -hmm. result. Uh, but um, you know, I know that the client has reached out to the owner of the property in the rear um, to discuss obtaining an easement to use at Airport Road. I think that we probably have an easement, but it's not express, and you know it's it's just not bankable. You know, it, you know, it, it, it's, yeah, I've got lawyerly arguments why we have an easement, but yeah. you really want to have something in writing. Understand? I mean, normally you have when you abut a private road. Normally you have the right to use it. Mm -hmm. You know, but as I said, the title on this one is a little different than what you usually see. Sure. Well, you have in your plan, you've got a driveway out to that road, right? As of right now, yeah. We also have a plan, too, with it without not being there. And it's essentially the same. I can 
draw in the next green marker. A couple more bushes? Yeah, it's, it, fun, it would sound essentially function the same way. I have no question. I think the applicant covered everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Big uh, and public hearing. Does anybody have anything they? Yes. Yes. Okay. Could you um, go to the podium, please, and name and address for the board, please? My name is uh, John, <coughs> John Caramaris, and I'm here with my dad. My dad is the owner of 1899 Main Street, which is the, the parcel directly to the northeast. Um, of the applicants so we have a number of issues with this plan i didn't even see the plan until wednesday it wasn't on the website until wednesday um but the the main it, we have three main issues the first issue is the proposed cross access that the applicant has indicated that goes over 1899 main street our parcel onto the parking lot. What is the applicant's basis for proposing cross access through a private parcel? I'm sorry, what was the question? On the plan, on the northeast section of the plan, you'll see a proposed cross access. So it'd be right here. Coming over to Domino's. Yeah. He has a, a two-way proposed cross access, a 14-foot wide right. exit come through his that front. abuts a private parcel next door. What is the applicant's basis for asserting right to cross a private adjoining parcel? Um. Do you guys want to answer that to me, please? Yeah, we, I, I mean, go ahead. It's an existing condition as is today. It's actually basically an open tarmac. I, you know, as far as the actual um, easement agreements that are in place, I, I'm not privy to that. I know they're going to obtain any kind of access easement agreements or that, that would continue here. Obviously, part of that is the adjoining property to us would be a benefit. No, you have to look forward. Oh, the adjoining property to us actually. No, you have to, you have to, address, address, the have to address the chair. You have to address the board. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the adjoining property actually ended up being a benefactor by keeping that existing driveway there. Uh, currently out there today, the driveway is, we'll call it not in modern conformance. So if the if the adjoining property was to redevelop or any, do basically anything within the right of way, they'd have to reapply for a DOT permit mm -hmm. and their access could be eliminated. Um, so, you know, if anything, we're actually end up providing a benefit to the adjoining property and it continues the current flow that's there today. I think to add to what the applicant is saying is they come to the zoning board for a special permit. We're not, the planning board looks at the site development. They're coming to us just for a special permit to actually have a car wash. So the, the site plan and the accesses and all of that would be in front of the planning board. Okay. I understand your question and your concern. Right. Okay, my, my second point is, I just want to go on the record that there is no easement between the two parcels. There's no easement by prescription. There's no easement by a group, any written, express, or implied easement over this, over this boundary line. Um, the second issue we have is the, the actual plot plan that they did. We do have an issue with the plot plan. And Again, I, I just saw this on Wednesday. I don't know if you guys had access to it before Wednesday, but th I th this is also a site issue, but we do have an issue with the plot plan and we'd like an opportunity to do our own survey to present to the board. Because there's an issue on the corner of this lot that we'd like to put on the record. Um. Are you looking to ask the applicant if you can survey their property or you want to survey your property? Survey my property. Go right ahead. You're welcome to do that at any time. Okay. Well, again, this, this application was not available to me until Wednesday. So 
I don't know if you guys are, is, are, is the ZBA, are you guys going to vote on anything? You're going to vote on this this evening or what? What's yes. the, you're going to, so I would ask for a continuance to allow us to survey our lot. Can, can I respond to that? Um, yes. Uh, we have stamped plans. Understood. Okay. okay. The, the abutter received notice of this hearing two weeks ago. Could have come down to the town hall and got the plans long ago. He didn't have to wait for them to be on the website. So it's a little disingenuous to come in here now and say I only got this stuff two days ago. He knows what he's doing. The notice of the of the, the notice on the of, that I got from the town of Tewksbury that you applied with. This I'll read the actual letter. It says the application may be examined on the Zoning Border, Border of Appeals web, web page of the Town of Tewksbury website at tewksburymass.gov. Okay, I called the Jack, um, I think it was Jacqueline Smith, uh, I forgot who it was at planning over two weeks ago and I just got this on a Wednesday. Are you scheduled to go up in front of the planning board? Uh, we're in front of the planning board in two weeks. Yeah, I, I don't have my calendar with me. Um, that would be the best place to bring that is the planning board, and that's in two weeks. So that will give you two weeks time. But well, you guys are voting on this tonight. application yeah. tonight, right? So, so what the? I understand your concerns. Believe me, I understand. Um, the zoning board only votes on whether they can have a car wash. We're not, they're not, um, they're not here for property lines or setbacks or any of the normal things that the zoning board does. They're here for a special permit. It still has to go to a, a site review, which could, could squash the whole thing. But the planning board is these concerns that you have, that's where those would be addressed, not by us. Got it. So us waiting, us continuing the meeting till next month here wouldn't help you in any way. Well, the, the, the objection that I'm putting on the record now yeah. is that this is, a, this is a notice issue to me. I didn't receive sufficient notice. The notice was deficient. So that's just what I'd like to get on the record. I mean, if you guys vote on it, but I'm putting it on the record right now that yeah. I did not receive sufficient notice for it. Understood. I honestly don't know how much notice. The applicant has to give. I don't know. I don't honestly. know. Uh, we're at the planning board on July 18th. July 18th. <coughs> Did you hear that, sir? July yes. 18th? Yep. Okay. I think uh, we can request that Jacqueline reach out. And, and inform you of what the notice should be because she's the one that he reached out to. All uh, right, I think you just you received a letter as an abata, right? Yes, nobody nobody reached out, you, you received your letter, your letter as an abata, but he reached out to Jack, is what he said, and she didn't respond to him. She, she did, but it wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't get a copy of these plans, nor was it uploaded until Wednesday afternoon, or sorry, Tuesday afternoon, two days ago. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone else? No. Is there anything else you want to add? No. Anybody want to make a motion? Close the uh, book passage. I'll we'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Somebody want to make a motion? Would you want to discuss this? Uh, no, I have no discussion. Do you have anything you want to talk about? No, on this? Uh, no discussion. Oh, I'm good, okay. thank you. Somebody want to make a motion? No, that's, that's you. That's you. That's you. It's all you. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I'd like to make a motion for a special permit in the section 3130. The old one, right? 3130, 
Appendix A, Table of Uses, Section C, Commercial Uses 14 of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaw, to construct and operate a drive-through car wash on the property as shown on plans with, the, with this board. Said property is located at 1879 Main Street, Assessor's Map 84, Lot 18, Zone Commercial. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, roughly how long until you file a decision? Is it, uh, are you guys days or weeks or everybody's different? I, Probably so days. I think a couple of days or okay. a week. As fast but as, fast as we get an email week. and respond it's back week. to it. Okay. It's holiday Thank you. week, sir. Yeah, I know. Uh, um, any old business? None? Do we have any new business? None? Okay, our uh, next meeting will be held July 28th. Um, somebody want to make a motion? Move to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.